Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind Pattern Scout. This week I'm gonna be making that slip dress that I was talking about in last week's video. So last week I was kind of doing a little bit of fabric shopping, doing a little fabric prep, kind of trying to sift through my many vintage patterns and pick a pattern that I wanted to work on for this dress. I did decide to go with a pattern that I've already made before and have actually shared here on the channel before. This is just a really, really cute 90s inspired slip dress that I found at a thrift store forever ago and I have made it a couple of times now. I kind of know how it fits. And so that's why I've decided to use this for this dress pattern because this wedding is in approximately three days, which basically means I have like two days to finish making this. Well, today, tomorrow, and Friday. And I actually have to also edit this video. So I'm, I'm kind of in a time crunch and I only have just a few small modifications that I wanna to make to the pattern to make this particular dress unique. So I picked up this jacquard poly satin from Joanne Fabrics. It's really pretty. It's got this really beautiful floral jacquard design on the fabric and I think it's going to be really nice for a slip dress like this. I'm going to be using this Guterman all-purpose polyester thread. This is what I use for pretty much all of my projects. I love this thread. Their thread is really high quality and that's what I'll be using for this. And then I'm going to be using a universal sewing machine needle in size 7010 and I'm using the Schmetz brand universal sewing machine needle. I think that's going to work out great. I was originally thinking I would use a Microtex needle, but all I have is a size 8012, and I think that's gonna be just a little bit too big for this project because this fabric is pretty lightweight. Those Microtex needles are nice because they have a really fine, sharp point, and they work really great for like really lightweight, especially shiny fabrics or really fine fabrics, slinky fabrics like a rayon. I really prefer to use Microtex when I can. But we're gonna start with the universal sewing machine needle and see how it goes. So this pattern is originally cut on grain and I'm gonna change things up a little bit. I'm gonna cut the top like bust pieces on grain and then I'm gonna cut the skirt and the back on the bias. The reason I want that is because a bias cut garment just really skims the body in a really beautiful way. Now, one of the things that is going to be a little bit of a challenge with this particular dress and cutting it on the bias is that my fabric has a crosswise stretch. And ideally it would be best if I had an equal stretch in the cross grain and the lengthwise grain. So my plan is to cut the pieces on the bias, but cut them kind of opposite so that when I put them together, the grain is basically mirrored so that it behaves the same way on both sides of the garment. I'll do that for the front and the back. So for this one, I actually added a little flutter sleeve and I'm, I'm not gonna have that on this slip dress. I'm gonna keep it really simple. So that will be gone. Let me just tuck that in there. I also just wanted to double check the way that the bust fit. This, the line here for this, the bottom of the bust is actually kind of, it comes across my lower bust just a little bit. And so at one point I was thinking I might try to lengthen that a little bit, but you know, it actually fits really well everywhere else. And right now I'm wearing a strapless bra that doesn't have a lot of support. I will have a little bit more supportive bra. So that will be lifted a little bit and I don't think it's gonna be an issue. And then as far as the back, so I've just got this zipped up. I kind of zipped it up just to about the point where I think I want the back to be because I'm gonna do kind of a, a V shape in the back. That'll make it a little easier to get it overhead. In addition to the bias cut shaping, the way that that's gonna be, it'll give me a little stretch and a little bit larger neckline so that I can pull this overhead a little bit more easily and eliminate the back zipper. So I think I will kind of bring the low back to about right there. My bra strap starts about right here. So maybe just a little bit above that just to make sure that I have coverage there. The dress that I'm making for this wedding is actually gonna be a midi length. So it'll be a good bit longer, maybe, I don't know, 10 to 12 inches longer than this one. And I'll just wear heels with it. I think that'll just be really pretty and it'll look a little bit more formal.
been waiting for my moment to be able to put these tables together like this ever since I got this desk. This is not a sponsored video, but this is the FlexiSpot desk and I've talked a little bit about it in previous videos but I'll put a link down in the description to this desk. You can lift and lower it really easily with the push of a button, pre-program different heights into it. And one of the reasons that I really wanted this desk was for this reason right here, so that I could lay out large pieces of fabric. You know, cutting something on the bias is perfect for this because you need to lay things out on a single layer and the fabric needs to be nice and straight. So I'm gonna lay out my fabric and start laying out my pattern pieces. So I'm just lining up the edges of the fabric with the edge of the table as kind of my guide along the selvage edge because the cut edge is gonna be a little uneven. So I'm just trying to make sure I get the selvage edge really nice and straight as much as I can. And because I drew these grain lines on the pattern pieces, I'm actually gonna measure from the edge of fabric to the grain line just to make sure that I'm getting this on the bias. This is the front piece here, that front skirt that attaches under the bust here. And this is the back piece here. So I'm starting with these. And I think what I'm gonna do is just try to trace around these with my little fabric pen here. I really love these. This is the heat soluble pen. I'm gonna use a really gentle, gentle, gentle touch because I don't want this fabric to shift too much. So I'm gonna trace around these two pieces before I cut anything. I'm also gonna add six inches to the bottom because I wanna lengthen this just a little bit. Um, this was already kind of longer below the knees. I just need to lengthen it about another six inches. So I'm gonna try to draft that on here onto the fabric. Then once I get those drafted on, I will pick those pieces up, flip them, basically mirror the pieces and then rotate them so that they are perpendicular to this position. But I wanna trace these on first because I basically wanna shift all this fabric toward me and reposition things, retrace, and then cut all the pieces out before the fabric gets all shifted and kind of a weird wonky shape where it's harder to actually position the pieces on the bias. So that's my plan. We'll see if it works. Wish me luck. So it's really hard to see because the fabric is very shiny. You can kind of see my lines there a little bit better. Yeah. If I get the light just right, I can see it actually pretty well. So before I cut anything, I'm just going to shift the fabric down here. Hopefully this works. And I'm going to, again, align all of the edges of the selvage. So now I'm gonna do the same thing to lay out the rest of the pattern pieces, mirrored and turned perpendicular to the ones that I've already traced on here. So now that I've got all of these pieces on the bias traced out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these and then I will just cut the bust pieces, the pieces that go over the bust for the front bodice on grain. So I'm not gonna worry about cutting, cutting those on the bias. I don't think that needs to happen. I wasn't sure if I would have enough or if I'd be like kind of cutting it close with the fabric. So I went ahead and ordered like four yards of this fabric. And I think that was like way more than enough. So I probably could have gotten away with three yards and been okay with this. But when you're cutting things on the bias, sometimes it can take a little bit of extra fabric. So I know Huxley, I know it's almost, actually you're early, it's not your dinner time yet. So just hang on. Um, so yeah, you can see it like is off the edge of the table here. We've got about probably at least two yards on the table and then maybe another yard plus hanging out the other end. So I think we had plenty. And I am gonna cut this using my rotary cutter. So I'm just gonna kind of shift everything over to the side of my table that has the cutting mat, use my rotary cutter. Cause my thinking is that even if the fabric shifts a little bit, I've got my lines here. So I know that I'm gonna be cutting this as the pattern was originally on this fabric. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to try it like this. I think that's gonna get the job done a little bit quicker.
So I was able to get a little bit more ink out of that pen. I need to get some more of those pens, but I love the white. The white is the best. Um, another thing too, this front bodice piece has a dart underneath the bust here. And I don't really love that. I did it on one version that I sewed a long time ago. I didn't like how it kind of, it just was prone to puckering here. So what I'm gonna do is, and I did this on my last one too, I'm just gonna kind of make a curve that kind of goes around the bottom there. I did need to add a little bit of extra length under the bust anyway. And I think I did this on the last one, but I don't think I add, added quite as much. So I probably added about at least a half inch here under the bust and then just kind of trued that back to the side seam and I'll just kind of gather this under the bust. Okay, how's my hair? I feel like you can tell what time of day it is by the condition of my hair. I've got all of my pieces cut out now and the cutting process is definitely the longest part of this, I think. Because now that I've got everything cut, I well, I always say this, I feel like the sewing part is gonna go relatively quickly. So I've got four front bodice pieces mirrored, and that is gonna be the exterior and the lining for this front bodice piece. For the pieces that are cut on the bias, you wanna lay those flat as you're constructing them. So you don't want to be hanging them up because they're gonna, they're gonna stretch. Eventually we will hang the garment to let it kind of stretch and you know become what it wants to be. But for now, while we're sewing it, we wanna keep everything flat. So the first thing that I wanna do is just stay stitch the neckline and the arm size of both the front and the back bodice and the exterior and the lining for those pieces. This is gonna keep those areas from stretching out because those are the, the one area that we wanna stay stable. We want those to remain the same shape that they are. The rest of this dress is gonna be kind of stretchy and we want that. And a stay stitch is just a regular stitch right inside of the seam allowance just to kind of keep a certain area from stretching out. So I've gone ahead and sewn the two front pieces together down that center front and then the two back pieces together down the center back. So this is just, I haven't opened this up yet. One thing that I did differently for the back is that I just basted with a kind of long, narrow zigzag stitch for the first probably nine inches of the back, just in case I decide that I wanna add a zipper later, that'll be easier to remove. And then I surged from that point down all the way to the hem. And I am surging these seams because I think it'll just more easily finish the seams. And that surged seam is gonna be a little bit more narrow, which is best for a bias cut dress like this to have a really narrow seam. And the surge seam is gonna provide a little bit of stretch. So it'll kind of stretch with that bias cut. If you don't have a serger, you can just do this on your regular sewing machine with a long narrow zigzag stitch that will work as well. But since I do have a serger, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it that way. Also went ahead and stay stitched the top of the front skirt piece where it attaches to the front bodice pieces. So those two pieces will be here. Um, I decided to go ahead and stay stitch that to kind of stabilize that edge on both sides there. Now I want to sew basting stitches into the bottom of the front bodice pieces, gather those a little bit, and then sew those to this front skirt piece. Now I kind of want to get the front bodice basted to the back bodice and try it on and just kind of check the overall fit and make sure there's not any other adjustments I want to make. I'll do the finishing after I check that. All right, first try on. I think the fit is actually pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna take any ease out or anything like that. I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of spread those gathers out along this seam a little bit more, just cause I'm getting like a little bit of a bulge right there. I think kind of spreading that out will help with that. And besides that, the only other issue that I have with this is that the back where I did the V back, let me reposition the camera, hang on. So where I did the V back, I actually came down a little too low. I could probably take it in a little bit more in the back here and just kind of extend that seam up a little bit. I was able to get this overhead pretty easily. So I may kind of bring that up or kind of sleep on it a little bit. I like how low it is. I just know that it's not gonna cover my bra. I need to take this in a little bit more in the back, which I always have to do for this dress pattern anyway. Um, so I'm gonna take it in just a little bit here, kind of for this way back and then taper it back out to where it goes over the butt. And right now I'm getting a little bit of puckering in the center back seam here, but I think after I let this hang a little bit, that'll kind of work itself out because it's already like, much better than when I first put this on. When I first put this on, I had like several big bumps right here and I was like, oh no. But it's already starting to kind of like relax into that bias cut and feel a little bit more 
you know, it's like smoothing out a little bit better. But yeah, I think this is really pretty. I'm actually really, really pleased with this so far. So last night I took apart everything. I just had basted all of this together so that I could try it on and check the fit. I took everything apart except for the center back bodice. I kind of left the back assembled. And then I attached the shoulders of the front bodice to the back bodice. And I did that for both the exterior of the dress and the lining pieces of the dress. Then I spent some time pinning the lining to the dress, right sides together along the neckline and the arm size. So now I'm gonna go through and first sew around the neckline and I'm gonna do some understitching to make sure that that seam allowance stays turned toward the interior. And then I will stitch the arm size. And I'm realizing now that I'm saying this that I probably shouldn't have pinned the arm size together just yet because I wanna get that understitching done before I do the arm size. And that's just gonna make sure that the lining stays kind of you know, nicely tucked into the interior. So I'm gonna remove the pins from the arm size and then I'm just gonna sew first the neckline. I'll do the understitching on that. Then I'll lay everything nice and flat again and pin the arm size, sew those, do the understitching on those. Then I can kind of turn everything right side out and move on to the next steps. Okay, so now I have attached those front bodice pieces to the front skirt piece. And like I mentioned before, I went ahead and just gathered that bottom of that front bodice piece or the bust piece along the entire edge and kind of, kind of distributed that along that edge there where it attached to the, attaches to the skirt. I've done all of this with basting stitches so that if I needed to go through and correct anything or smooth anything out, I could do that. So here you can get a little bit better picture of how that looks from the front. So there's the bottom of the bust. It's gathered all along there. There are basting stitches in here. Right now I will remove these after I've got everything sewed together. So I'm just going to fold this back down like so and attach this lining piece right sides together with the front skirt so that these bodice bust pieces are sandwiched in between the lining and the skirt. Okay, so we're almost done with this dress and this has actually come together quite nicely so far. So um, it did take me a little bit of time to get that lining piece attached to sandwich the best pieces between the lining and the outside. Like I, I really had to take my time with that. I said a few curse words. So now I need to just sew the side seams together. And to do this, I'm basically going to align the front of this dress right sides together with the back of the dress at the side seams. And then I'm gonna take the back lining here. You can see this is separate. I'm gonna fold it over the side seam of the front lining to kind of sandwich that together. And then I'll sew that side seam all in one stitch. And then when I turn it right side out, the kind of back lining will encase the front of this and kind of clean finish that edge there right around the lining pieces. And then the exposed seam of the rest of the dress is just gonna be a serge seam. So um, it should be a nice clean finish. I actually got this idea when I was shopping in Target the other day. I saw a dress, well, I was kind of looking at their slip dresses. I was just really curious to see how they finished them. And so I did get some ideas about kind of sandwiching things in certain ways and kind of flipping things this way and that. Um, so it is a really good idea whenever you're out and about shopping, even if you don't like the clothing on the racks, it's kind of nice to go and just see how things are finished. A lot of times, you know, these things are being mass produced and so they are finished in a way that's a little bit more efficient. So it makes sense. Um, but yeah, I did get some ideas just going and looking at dresses for how to finish the interior of this because I have gone completely rogue from this pattern at this point. Like I don't even follow the pattern instructions, which kind of, kind of complicated things for me on the last dress that I made with this pattern. But for this one, I, I had a little bit more of a plan going into it. And then once I have the side seam sewn, I'm going to just let this dress hang. So today is Thursday and the wedding is on Saturday. I'm gonna try to let this dress hang for 24 hours so that gravity kind of works through all of that unevenness. And then too, I will also decide on the length because it may end up being a little bit longer than I originally thought, just because it's gonna stretch out with that bias cut.
Oh, really? That's cool. Gosh, I'm like nervous to cut this. Uh, I don't know a good strategy here I'm doing this because I can't really I need to hang it up higher. I'm anxious to cut it. To hem this dress, I'm just going to sew a really tiny quarter inch folded twice hem. And I'll sew that first fold down. And I'm using a pretty short stitch length, like maybe two millimeters. I think that'll be better for something like this. So there's that first fold stitched down. And now I'm just gonna fold it again and stitch it down again. I think this will be okay. It might get a little bit of a wavy lettuce edge situation going on, but I think that I'm okay with that. I also decided to sew a couple of rows of shirring here on the back bodice. Um, it's not perfect, but I don't think it's really gonna show that much. <laughs> but this area back here at the lower back was just kind of still bulging a little bit even after I took it in. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna gather that a little bit with some shirring and I think that'll just kind of cinch the back a little bit and make it a little bit more shapely around this way back. dress that I'm extremely happy with. I do have a few notes about things that I might do differently next time. I just, I think it would have been better without the center front seam. The center front seam is a little bit kind of wobbly and I keep finding myself kind of tugging down. This might eventually relax out and be totally fine. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing that's kind of bugging me a little bit. And then from the side, it's got a little bit of a bumpy profile there. Other than those things, I'm actually really, really thrilled with how this dress turned out. So before I go, I want to remind you guys that I did recently start a Patreon page. If you are interested in supporting me over there, I'll put a link down in the description to the Patreon. And I'm just going to be sharing some additional perks for my Patreon members things that can kind of go along with the YouTube content that I'm already sharing. And I did release a little pattern download a couple of weeks ago on Patreon for a little peasant blouse and dress pattern. Super cute, very easy to sew. Anyhow, I think that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy today's video, please be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. You can also give me a thumbs up those are also appreciated. And yeah, I think that's it for today. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.